Yes, yeah, certainly as a child, I have memories of having built tree houses, and um, uh, they remain special places for us all. I think the reason why we as children want to build them, I think, are the same as the reasons why one as an adult would want to live in a tree house. They're a little bit separate, first of all. They're not on the ground. People have to work to get there. You have to climb up into them. Um, you're in a commanding position, you know, and uh, you have a view. It's a kind of savanna like view of the distance. And those are all very primal instincts I think we all have about um, how to inhabit the world. And as adults, you start to lose that magic in a lot of ways. And uh, for us, this house is in part an effort to really bring some of that magic back, the magic of the house and the tree. So the Loblolly House um, is a house on Taylor's Island, Maryland. Uh, it's right on the Chesapeake Bay, a really beautiful site. Uh, it's an unusual site and, and one that you know, works within the, that environment and that place to design something that is very sensitive and environmentally ethical. That environmental ethic leads one to obviously lifting the house up off the ground uh, and touching the site very lightly. We believe that the thing that makes architecture different than say an automobile or a ship or an airplane is the fact that architecture is rooted to the ground. It has to be fixed to the earth. You know, we, we put the piles in it in a way that they're not even all straight and that's intentional so that they kind of, you know, do more naturally start to sit in and mimic the form of the forest. We've assembled this building virtually um, in a 3D model. We've seen all the conflicts with all the other systems, you know, the conflict between the, the Bosch uh, column and the wall. We've, we see where those problems occur way before we get to the site, and for that reason, we avoid the site delays that, are, that typically happen in a construction site. So we do have um two more weeks until we are on site and today I want to update the model um, to incorporate the newest design of two crucial connectors um, with the sketches that I received from the structural engineer and making those changes will be the final step before we can hand off shop drawings to the, the fabricator uh, in order to have them on site when we, uh, when we need them. Most houses today are built uh, out of literally thousands upon thousands of individual separate parts, all of which arrive at the site as separate parts and are assembled largely by hand on the site, um, element by element, beginning from the foundation and working to the roof. Uh, so if you were to actually look at all the parts before the house um, started, you would see a field a vast field of elements um, that would cover an area probably 15 or 20 times the footprint of the house of parts laid out on the ground. By contrast, uh, Loblolly House is built out of integrated assemblies of these parts. From the outset, one of the key ideas here was to develop elements of architecture that would allow us to fabricate the house largely off-site and more swiftly than regular construction. A key idea in that was establish a scaffold, in essence a frame system, to support all these elements. Well, we're, we're a few weeks away right now from our starting on-site date, and we have a lot of fabrication to do before that. Fortunately, the way that we work with our 3D model and output to our computerized cutters allows us to do all of this work ahead of time. We literally build it in the computer model before we do any cutting. And again, that goes back to manufacturing capabilities as opposed to on-site work. This way, we've, made, we've seen all of the junctions, all of the structure, all of the ways that pieces need to fit together before we actually cut anything. This allows us to actually do the fabrication very quickly because we know that every piece we cut has a reason and it has a position and everything will fit together as it should. 
So this is our Hundiger machine that we use for pre-cutting all of our parts. All of our jobs are modeled in three dimensions. The, the uh, files are all put on the network. Ray's actually downloading the file off the network, loading the parts onto the machine, and cutting them. And so the house is built on, on piers, common piers like you might see where the ferry comes in. You know, they're all grouped together. The ferry bumps against them. These are kind of spread out and sunk in. And uh, we're building a structure on top of these piers. So what I'm working on today is uh, the upper part of the substructure. There's a lower part which bolts to the piers. The real challenge for Steve Kieran and uh, his team, Aurelia Rodriguez, has been to take a high tolerance product like the Bosch aluminum strut and interface that with the low tech environment of typical housing uh, products like these wooden pylons that they've driven into the ground. But once you can create that interface between the wooden pylons to the Bosch aluminum strut, you're off and running with uh, pre-manufactured and pre-designed modules that will literally snap into place uh, with, uh, you know, 99 percent confidence. And then there will be, in a, in a particular piece, there will be bolts that will go through to attach to the saddle, which is attached to the substructure. Hence, you have uniformity, and you have unity, and you have some integrity. After uh, the frame is assembled, the cartridges, the floor cartridges, are inserted in it. These are structural elements. They're over typically 20 feet long and about 8 feet wide. These are the elements that are really packed solid with utilities for the house. Uh, radiant heating tubing runs throughout, electrical wiring in here, microducted cooling systems. As you can see, even though we're on rollers and we're not even hooked up yet, the electricians have lights already going in here that's powered from an outside outlet so that they can pretty much plug anything in and test run the boiler to make sure the electronics work, test run the zones to make sure that each valve has power. The on-site plumber will just have to stub his connections up and tie into the valves and the heating system's ready to go. By pre-building modules like this, we're able to pre-install them and get them set up so that you basically ship a whole bathroom. When this is done and is going to be transported, we'll take this module, we'll lay it down on its back. Inside, you'll have your toilet, you'll have your sink, the shower, and all the mechanical components already pre-installed. The day they arrive on the site, for the first couple of days, you'd see collar beams going up. That's a pretty tedious process, that part. And it's tedious largely because it's site construction. It's classic site construction. It's why it takes so long to build on the site. It's, um, it's cutting and fitting and, you know, to, to basically match field circumstances. So, and then once that's up, boom. Today is a big day because it's our first day on site. So we've, we've spent the day um, establishing our level cutting off the excess off the piles, getting the tops nice and level. Like most other things, you sort of get a system going, and once we do that, it seems to work out fairly well, so. They're prepping the piles, so getting the piles cut and level uh, to receive the substructure, the wood substructure and structure, which is the, the platform for the house. When we get everything leveled up, we're gonna start snapping lines for our, our post positions, and uh, tomorrow, We'll be starting to work on notching, setting in the lower level of the substructure, um, bolting that together, and then when that's in place, we'll be able to put the upper level on and get the two attached together. We're slowly going from ground to pile, which is you know, fairly inaccurate. We're trying to add accuracy as we go so that by the time we get to aluminum, we're very accurate. when the components arrive on site before they get erected to make up the house. You know, the analogy is like a tabletop. So those, those things get placed on top or within this, this table. And the connections between the house and the site happen in, at that point. I think we're 
we're good to go for the aluminum. It's been hard to go from pressure treated piles to you know, the tolerances that we need for the aluminum frame in one step. So, but that's what we're gonna find out this morning as we start to try to fit stuff on top. Today the main project is to install the remaining floor panels, uh, some of the modules which are the bathroom modules as well as the mechanical systems. And in this system we're using when we install a floor panel we have to do some of the mechanical tie-ins before we can install the following floor system. Everything is pre-wired and will be attached and from this panel we'll run just along the spine below me. Uh, connect to floor panel, these will be marked red to red and a quick connect. This feed will run up the wall system to the other uh, floor system above. Most of the frame is, is that aluminum scaffold. And we liked it because it was store bought. You didn't have to custom fabricate it. You could buy it. They're stock extrusions. And it also has an attachment system to it. They're little grooves on the side of the aluminum and you can attach all kinds of things to it. We've been able to use those grooves to hang the floor panels to support the floors. Um, we've been able to use them to uh, do things even like contain sliding door tracks. Um, ultimately we're going to use them actually to hang pictures from you know with wires. So uh, you know those channels are kind of neat. One of the great frustrations to James and I of the last several years of our practice has been the inability of our profession at large and us as a part of it to actually holistically transform the way we make architecture. The extraordinarily long durations it takes to put our buildings together, the lack of really leading edge technology and features and scope in our buildings. They're why we wrote Refabricating Architecture, why we developed a research arm in our offices to find better ways to build. And Saturday, a week before, they were just setting the first pieces of aluminum. Uh, the very first pieces of frame were going in. So we go back a week later, and not only is the whole frame up, but half the house is up, too. And they're putting a roof on it. So uh, that was really exciting. That was kind of part of the vision was, you know, how fast can we go? And um, uh, the answer is, you know, once you get settled with your foundation and the ground plan of the house, you can really move. I was very apprehensive. I didn't want to be the project manager on this when it first came across. I looked at it and I, I couldn't even understand how it, how it all really went together. And, uh, you know, through the period of working on it in the, in the uh, office and then, of course, on site, it, it's a great way to to build. It's the disentanglement of the structure from the insulation barriers and from the siding systems and the mechanicals. Everything's disentangled, everything's accessible, so it's, it's a great way to build for the present and the future. When we come down that driveway, it's an 800 foot long driveway, and it's in the afternoon, um, you can see you know, 150 yards away this orange glow in the wood in the middle of the house and you don't know what it is. It could be a fire, um, could be the sun, you don't know, but it's magical. You know, it was intended to accentuate the daily ritual on this site of the west facing sun and draw your attention to it. Just say, you know, stop and wake up and look, you know, because it's magical. trees become pilings to support the house uh, but are also help create the image of the tree house the house lifted up in the trees uh, so that's a, a, an example of a, a pairing between um, pragmatism and uh, and poetry uh, 
so you'll see those types of pairings you know everywhere you turn If you do the right thing in all cases, whether they're pragmatically driven or artistically driven, in almost all instances, when those come together, that's when you really start to get a piece of great architecture. And that's what architecture is about. It's about the fusion of shelter with the art of rooting buildings to places, uh, to people that need to use them, and to you know, the technologies available to us to build them.